Hi LEGO fans! You've been asking for more old LEGO Harry Potter set reviews and today you're in for a treat. They really don't get any older than this. Dating all the way back to 2001, today I'm going to be unbagging, speed building and reviewing set number 4721 Hogwarts Classrooms from LEGO Harry Potter. We'll also be taking a journey through time, examining almost 20 years of LEGO Harry Potter minifigures. And if that wasn't exciting enough, we'll be taking a look at every LEGO mirror of Erised. This is one of 11 sets released in 2001 based on Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'll say that one more time, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'll let you guys battle that one out in the comments. These sets included 4701 Sorting Hat, 4702 The Final Challenge, 4704 The Room of the Winged Keys, 4705 Snape's Class, 4706 Forbidden Corridor, 4707 Hagrid's Hut, 4708 Hogwarts Express, 4709 Hogwarts Castle, 4722 Gryffindor House, and 4723 Diagon Alley Shops. Hogwarts Classrooms is a 73 piece set and the part count includes one minifigure. No prizes for guessing that it's Harry Potter. I don't own one of these mint in box, but in case you were wondering what the box art looked like, it would look something like this. This is set number 4720, Nocturne Alley from 2003. Ironically, the set number predates the 4721 Hogwarts Classrooms. It's almost like LEGO designed a bunch of these at once and then released them to coincide with the movies. One of the more unusual features about this set is the cardboard backdrop. This is used in conjunction with the LEGO to make a more attractive scene. On this side we have what could almost be the astronomy tower, and if we turn it over, well I guess this must be one of the corridors or maybe the library. As you can see from the frayed edges, these were made quite inexpensively and probably torn from a long sheet. I got this for $24 plus shipping off eBay, but if you've got one mint in box it's worth about $95. Also bundled with the cardboard backdrop was the 4722 Gryffindor House and 4723 Diagon Alley Shops. Needless to say, both of those are on my want list. Helping us to make sense of all the pieces is a 15 page instruction booklet. It looks like we have the classroom where Harry first experiences the Mirror of Erised, and then we have what is presumably Snape's Potions classroom. One thing's for certain, this is a very colourful set, it's like an explosion in a paint factory. Whilst it's very important to have the instructions and the cardboard cutout, the most important thing is having all of the LEGO parts because there are some unusual elements here. I'm assured by the seller on eBay that this is a complete set, but there's only one way to find out. We've got a couple of brightly coloured 8x8 base plates, a bunch of pink elements the designers borrowed from the Belleville team, a very unusual orange door which I believe was exclusive to this set, a bunch of printed stuff, some animals including a bioluminescent spider, a badly stickered mirror of Erised, a bunch of orange stuff which perfectly matches the gothic interior of Hogwarts, even more appropriately coloured elements, mmm shiny things. And last but not least, a dismembered Harry Potter minifigure. I'm going to go ahead and build set number 4721, Hogwarts Classrooms from LEGO Harry Potter. And today this is going to be a 30 second speed build. And here is the completed 4721 Hogwarts Classrooms from LEGO Harry Potter. This was very simple to put together and build time was about 10 minutes. The instructions were particularly interesting as they showed photos of the build at every stage. There was no summary of the parts to attach and it was a little bit like playing spot the difference. But here is the completed build in all its orange, pink and purple glory. The only question I have is LEGO what were you thinking? It reminds me a little bit of the LEGO Scala sets which were around in the late 90s to early 2000s. Similarly here we have a mix of bright colours and pastel shades. And yes that is a LEGO doll, and that face cannot be unseen. 
The early 2000s were not the high point of LEGO's history. As well as weird looking Harry Potter sets, they also launched the ill-fated Galidor range which nearly bankrupted the company. In fact, getting over this financial crisis cost LEGO its theme parks and it would be 20 years before they could buy them back. Galador and Scala are videos for another day, but getting back on track, this one is an absolute doozy. I don't know why they chose to include a cardboard backdrop. It's certainly not the most resilient of choices, but maybe it gave them the opportunity to swap it out quickly if they got the artwork wrong after seeing the movie. Certainly when it came to the colour choices, it was way too late. Later in the video, we'll take a closer look at the Harry Potter minifig and compare Harry Potter through the ages. First, let's take a look at this crazy cardboard contraption. The thing I really find annoying is that it's virtually impossible to get everything lined up properly. The cardboard is flexible and it doesn't want to sit at a proper right angle. So I wondered whether there might be a clever solution to this. I did think about attaching both of these 8x8s to a base plate, but there really isn't enough space between them to wedge the cardboard. LEGO works to very small tolerances. But after some thinking, I thought if you could just get a studs width between them, that would probably work. And that's how this happened. You might already know this, but the plates with the studs in the middle are actually called jumper plates. These provide a way of mounting a stud between two normal studs. These grey posts around the back will hold the cardboard in place, but the studs on top of those clips do present a small problem. Thankfully, I've got a fix from my good friends at Bodget and Scarper. These provide just enough clearance for the studs on the clip at the back. The 8x8 plates now snap neatly into place. Now we have a neat channel between the two sets for the cardboard. And it's held neatly in place around the back to keep my OCD in check. Exploring this 73 piece Lego Harry Potter set, we have the classroom where the mirror of Erised was found. This lacks some of the original features, including the word Erised, which of course is desire spelt backwards. In this case, Harry's deepest desire is to be reunited with his parents who are pixelated into the background. The mirror itself is made up of a sticker printed onto a foil material. It wasn't applied very well by the previous owner, but overall it doesn't look too bad. The feet of the mirror are these rather unusual orange elements. They kind of look like flowers, but stand about a brick tall. Also unusual is the very shiny golden finial. We see these in other LEGO Scala sets and other Harry Potter sets, including the Durmstrang ship. While we're talking about the mirror of Erised, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some other LEGO examples. Going by set number order, this is not the first mirror of Erised to appear in a LEGO set. It first appeared in set number 4702, the final challenge from 2001. This recreates the final scenes, including Harry Potter and Professor Quirrell from the Philosopher's Stone. And sweet baby Jesus, what happened to Voldemort? He looks like he's had a butterfly tattooed on his face. The very unusual thing about this mirror is a lenticular image. If you turn it to one side, Harry Potter reveals the Philosopher's Stone. You'll find another version of the mirror of Erised inside the magnificent Hogwarts castle, set number 71043. It's not very exciting, but this 6,020 piece masterpiece includes a stickered version of the mirror. I believe there's also a very boring version of the mirror of Erised in 4867 Hogwarts from 2011. I don't have one of those, so we'll gloss over that for now. Finally, we have the mirror of Erised from 75954 Hogwarts Great Hall. This was released in 2018, and you can find a review on my channel. This time we do get the word Erised, which is desire written backwards. The full script on the real mirror reads Erised Stra Eru Oit Ubi Kafru Oit On Uzi. All words to that general effect. Reading that backwards and changing the spacing, it says, I show not your face, but your heart's desire. In this case, just like the 2001 version, you can see Harry reunited with his parents. We can also see Dumbledore with a pair of fluffy socks. And we can replace the mirrored panel altogether. And this shows the heart's desires of other characters, including Professor Quirrell and Ronald Billius Weasley. That must be the Quidditch Cup. As well as a mirror, we also have a desk and a table. And I love the unusual colour choices here. It's not very often you see a pink chair. The desk itself is pretty simple and made up of three different Lego elements. I like the way the two elements at the bottom are sandwiched together back to back to make legs. Providing a way to get in and out of the classroom, we have this large orange door piece. 
It's mostly a single piece construction with a couple of flanges to attach a door. The door is not an uncommon element, in fact you see these in Hagrid's hut, but you very rarely see it in this purple colour. The door comes equipped with a keyhole and a golden key, in fact you can push the key into the door and give it a little turn. We have transparent orange fire elements on each side of the door but they do kind of blend in. There are also some trans purple pieces, a leaded window so you can see who's outside, and our good friend Hedwig the Owl. She's one of the really old non-printed versions. The backdrop for this section of the bill shows the many staircases of Hogwarts, and then on the right hand side we've got the sun beating through a window into a classroom full of school books. On the other side we have what I guess is the potions classroom, but there are some inaccuracies here. The cardboard background clearly shows this in the top part of a tower of Hogwarts. We've got skylights in the roof, and a telescope looking out of a window. Assuming this is meant to be Snape's potions class, it really should be down in the dungeons. But hey, we've got pink chairs, so let's just roll with it. We have a pair of those pink chairs in the classroom, and they're mounted on trans pink 2x2 bricks. We also have two desks, which are constructed in the same way from two pieces back to back. Removing one of the tabletops reveals that not all of these pieces are original. As you can see, one of the table legs has been replaced with a newer part. That's not a big deal to me because you can't see it, but if I do find one of the period parts in my collection, I will certainly replace that. Sitting on one of the desks, we have a green frog. I was tempted to call this Trevor the Toad, but of course first years aren't allowed pets. On the other desk, we have this decorative potions flask. It's made of a trans yellow cone piece and a blue crystal. On the other side of the classroom, we have a blackboard mounted inside of an unusually coloured frame. I did make several attempts to read the writing, but concluded that this is just gibberish. Despite my expectations that this would be a stickered piece, it's actually a printed panel and looks great. It's blank on the back, but on the front we've got some really crisply printed writing. Sitting in front of the blackboard is another potions flask, and I guess the yellow thing is probably going to be a blackboard eraser. I'm really not sure what this trans pink thing is, maybe it's a wand, maybe it's some kind of stirrer for the cauldron. Speaking of the cauldron, there's something lurking inside. It's a very unusual trans yellow spider. Usually these come in solid colours, but this one is actually transparent yellow and looks amazing. The cauldron sits on one of these unusually coloured 2x2 bricks, and then there are four trans orange elements for the fire. The effect is pretty convincing. Other classroom features include a cupboard which is sadly empty, and this little bookcase which contains some interesting looking titles. I think we've got some custom printed books. This one appears to be a potions book, but I'm sure it's not going to be the Half-Blood Prince's copy. It's got a printed picture of a potions bottle on the front, and uh, yeah, we've got another bottle and a flask on the back there with some smoke emitting, and then on the spine we've got a test tube with some more potions. Inside the book, because these do open, we have a printed piece, this is actually a trans blue tile, and then we have some stars on that, it's very cool. The other book seems to be more geared towards magical creatures. Maybe it's a copy of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. On the front cover we've got a picture of a dragon, there's some decoration on the spine there, and then on the back we've got a spider, or maybe more accurately, an acromantula. This is a really cool printed book. Inside we do also have a printed 1x2 tile, which is very spectacularly printed. Lots of uh, metallic stars on there in metallic gold, which is awesome. And I, I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. We've got a spider, a bone, and then some kind of sack. Maybe it's mixing up a potion, or maybe it's just telling you how to collect ingredients for a potion. Apologies for the beep you just heard, I've been bidding on some stuff on eBay, and apparently I just won the 4867 Hogwarts set. Maybe we'll get a closer look at that mirror of Erised after all. I've definitely seen the book with the dragon before, I'm pretty sure that's in the first edition of Hagrid's Hut. But I really like the spell book, which is definitely new to me. I think out of the two classrooms, this one has to be my favourite. I'm a huge fan of printed elements, and there are some really nice ones here. Plus you can never have too many Lego frogs. This is definitely not Snape's Dungeon Potions classroom, but I love the quirkiness of this. It's so out there compared to other LEGO Harry Potter sets. Speaking of LEGO Harry Potter, let's take a look at that minifigure. The yellow face is a surefire giveaway that this is one of the earliest LEGO Harry Potter minifigures. This little guy's reached the ripe old age of 18, and I guess it's time for him to enjoy a celebratory drink. 
He's wearing his Gryffindor school uniform and has this novelty oversized wand. It's just a kind of Lego post there, which is um, not very exciting. They do get updated in 2018. He's also wearing these grey pants, which are standard minifigure legs, and then this beautifully printed Gryffindor school uniform, which is a jumper with a Gryffindor badge, and then we've got a tie there in the Gryffindor colours with the white shirt underneath. The facial expression is very simple, but quintessentially Harry Potter. We've got the black printing with red there for the lightning shaped scar. And then we've got this kind of Beatles-esque haircut. Uh, no printing around the back of the minifigure head because that wasn't a thing back then in 2001. And he's wearing this purple cape. Sometimes you see this substituted for black because people lose them. Uh, but this one is exactly as it should be. There will be no printing around the back because again in 2001 we didn't print minifigures on the back. Well, nowadays we get arm printing and all sorts of stuff. But that is a very cool and very old Harry Potter. I did promise to show you some other Harry Potter figures from the ages. So let's roll out some reinforcements. I can't show you every Harry Potter minifigure because I don't own them all. But I can show you Harry Potters ranging from 2001 through 2019. Starting at the very beginning, this is the 4721 Harry Potter from Hogwarts Classrooms. Fast forwarding to 2002, this is Harry from 4728 Escape from Privet Drive. From the same year with the same yellow faces, Harry from 4727, Aragog in the Dark Forest. In 2004, we transitioned to flesh-coloured Harry Potters. This is Harry from the 4755 Night Bus. Jumping forward to 2010, we have Harry from 4840, The Burrow, possibly one of my favourite Lego sets. Another great Lego set is 10217, Diagon Alley from 2011, and here is Harry looking a little disconcerted. In 2018, Harry got a major makeover and shrank a lot. Here he is from 75950, Aragog's Lair. And finally, Harry grows up in more ways than one. He's now got the medium poseable legs and looks very dapper in his dress robes. This is of course the Harry from the 2019 75948 Hogwarts Clock Tower. Harry has certainly changed a lot over the years and I'm sure he will continue to evolve as LEGO roll out new waves of LEGO Harry Potter. So that was set number 4721, Hogwarts Classrooms from LEGO Harry Potter. This is definitely one of the quirkiest LEGO Harry Potter sets I've ever seen and I'm definitely going to be looking out for sets number 4722 and 4723. The cardboard background is definitely an interesting concept but one that LEGO has long since abandoned. What I do enjoy about this is the fact that I see something different every time I look at it. For example, there's a mouse just there. I also saw a mouse there, where, there on the stair. And there's even a rascally rodent on top of this astronomical globe. The more I look at this, the more I think LEGO were trying to do something really special here. Rather than creating LEGO sets about the movie, this seems to recreate the classrooms coming to life straight out of the book. That allowed them to set aside the dark conventions of the Hogwarts we know and love today. I also question from the colour choices which align quite nicely with Belleville and Scala, was this LEGO Harry Potter set gender targeted towards girls? In any case, last time I checked, I'm not a girl and I really love this set. I'm really curious to know what you think to this 2001 LEGO Harry Potter set. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below and give a shout out for the LEGO Harry Potter set you want me to review next. I really hope you enjoyed this retro LEGO Harry Potter set review. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more LEGO Harry Potter magic. Thanks a million for checking out the review, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video. This recreates the final scenes including Harry Potter and Professor Squirrel from... No, stop f***ing Squirrel!